do a wreath tutorial for you showing you how to make a um, flower wreath. We get asked quite frequently, this is a tutorial that we did a while back using deco paper mesh. And the question keeps coming up is can you make the same tutorial using deco poly mesh, which is mesh which is synthetic and made out of plastic. Uh, the poly mesh is waterproof so you can't put it outside. It is, it will fade eventually just like you know any plastic product. But this flower is made out of the deco paper mesh and we recommend you use it inside or in a very, very well protected area. So I thought well, we'll try uh, a wreath using um, the poly mesh and just see how it goes. So I just picked out a, um, this is just some plain deco poly mesh uh, that you know has no foil. And the only thing that I, I saw that uh, when I tried to use that, and I didn't make uh, a whole wreath, is you know when you cut it in your squares and a 10 inch square and fold it to make your petal when you it's pretty stiff so when you you know pinch it together when you're doing your petal for your flower you want those petals to when you put them in your twist you want the petals to go out to the outside and it seemed like with the poly mesh, it just wanted to stay uh, spread out and it wouldn't hold, you know, going in, you know, sticking out like that. Now, if you stack enough, a rough, a stack enough petals around your wreath, it might still work. Um, and the only other thing that I ran into, it seemed like, was quite a bit of raveling. Now, it's all going to ravel, whether it's paper or poly or whatever you use. It is going to ravel, but uh, I, I just, I did about five or six twists and then I stopped because it, it always seemed like my, my petals were lying flat instead of going into that V shape. The paper mesh, oops, <laughs> not my table off. The paper mesh, uh, that's, I think is one reason that it works so well, you know, for that particular style is because, uh, of course, it rivals too, but when you uh, <clears throat> make your petal and then you kind of make that V, you know, it kind of, it just, it holds it a little better. So, uh, we'll, that's why I chose the paper to start with. But we do have another product that, that may uh, work well, and it will hold up outside just like the poly mesh. It's this new, it's poly. Uh, but then it has a, a jute thread in it. This is the blue. We're not going to make the, our flower out of that, but I had that roll. I just wanted to show you. So when I cut a 10 inch square of that, and you lay it down and pull your two corners together, and then I like to turn it over and pinch it together, it's softer. And then you, you know, you want your, make your little V, it's softer. And I think it'll I think it'll work better than just plain poly mesh. So that's what we're going to use today. We have some moss green that we're going to use for the leaves, and we have some orange. And I'm going to go ahead and cut those. We're going to start out. The orange comes is 10 inches wide, and it's a 10 yard roll. And we're going to use a 10 inch orange pencil wreath. Uh, there are 12 twists around this wreath. And we're going to for sure put two layers of petals around each one. And then we're going to fill in the center with some additional petals. So out of a 10 inch width, 10 yard roll, we should get 30 10 inch pieces for our petals. But I'm, I have another roll just in case you know it's not enough. And then for the moss green, uh, we're going to make our uh, petals probably 17 or 18 inches in width because we want those petals to stick out beyond uh, the pet the pink like like on this one stick out beyond the flower petals. I'm gonna cut those and then we'll get started. And this is the orange <clears throat> burlap mesh. Uh, the number is um, XB93210-19.
We're going to cut our petals 10 inches in width. I'm just going to cut all my petals and then I'll get started. You see how that natural tendency of the mesh is to curl up and that's, <clears throat> that's the shape that you want when you start creating your petals. Now for our green petals we're going to cut those a little wider because we want them to stick out beyond the orange petals. This will be our leaves. This is a moss green and the number on it is XB93210-08. It's 10 inches wide, 10 yards in length. We have 12, let's see, we have around the outer edge, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we have seven twists, so I'm probably going to do, start out with seven, and if we need to put a double layer, then we can look at that once we get done. gives us seven ruffles and uh, seven uh, leaf petals and if we just decide that we need more we can come back and cut them. So this is our eight inch, excuse me, our ten inch pencil wreath. It measures, the widest portion is ten inches on these wreaths. Uh, this is a, a non-metallic orange and the first thing you do is just get your twist smoothed out and since we're for this one, we are going to start working on the outer edge first. And the wreath is XX167820. So, I'm going to take your mesh and we're going to see how it naturally curls up. Well, we're going to flip it over. We're going to take the corner, come to the middle, and then we're just going to kind of scrunch it up. I'm going to turn it back over again because we want that curved portion to be our leaf. And we want the leaves to point out in kind of a V fashion. So I'm going to lay it in that first twist. And these are not, I know, they're not going to stick out like the not quite as well as the paper, but you know, we're going to start with it that way. Okay, and that's holding the V pretty good. You can see that. Okay. Just going to put just a couple of twists, you know, on the on your tie because you're going to come back on top of this and put another layer. So no need to secure it, you know, very tightly like with three or four twists at this point. Okay. Now we've gone all the way there, around the outside with one row of uh, leaves. And now we're going to come back right on top of that and start our orange petals. If we decide, once we get finished with it, that we need more green on the outside, we can come back and add in more. And we're also going to add in some tails, you know, from the bottom. The orange is done the same way. See how it curls up. Flip it over on its back. Bring the two corners to the center. Pinch together. And 
Then we're going to go right back on top of that green petal, green leaf, open up the twist, and lay the orange right down on top of it and re-secure. When Carrie and I are working together, this goes a lot faster. Uh, and typically what we'll do is she'll be cutting uh, the mesh and making the uh, petals and I'll put two, I'm going to use two layers of orange petals. So I would go ahead and uh, go ahead and put a second layer right now. But since I'm working alone, I'm going to go ahead and work all the way around and then we'll uh, come back to that. Now, we've gone all the way around the outer wreath, the outer ring with one layer of orange petals. We're going to do two layers, uh, and it just depends. We might do three if we think we need it, but right now we're planning to do two. But before we go any farther, I want to show you what we're going to do to the center because we are going to need to fill in the center with some petals also. So uh, we're going to add a cross piece in here that we can attach some petals to. We're going to do that using some chenille stems. It would be nice if I had chenille stems that matched. Uh, I have three grandchildren and, and my craft supplies are just, you know, theirs too. So they're, they're all way. I, it's so easy to blame. You know when you got grandkids, it's just always so easy to blame everything on them. You can say, well, my house was clean, but the grandkids came. or uh, oh, I had uh, plenty of snacks in the cabinets with the grandkids. <laughs> so, we're going to take a chenille stem and you're going to locate one of the crossbars. You can see that on the wreath. And we're going to attach a chenille stem around that crossbar. This is just to keep it from slipping and sliding. And take that in and just wrap it around the metal frame. And then stretch it over very tightly to the crossbar on the other side and do the same thing. Just gonna wrap it around. Okay. And then we're gonna take one more and we're gonna go across this way. Find another crossbar. Just right there. And this will just give us uh, a couple more places to attach, you know, a few more petals in to fill in that center. We're also, uh, on this wreath, we had some black uh, twist balls. We're out of these twist balls right now. Uh, we do have them in chocolate and gold. But we have another item that I think that we can use for that center. It'll work just as well. This is a new... Uh, Black sequin ball comes in a bag of 12. Each ball is on about a little six inch wire and I think we'll be able to use those for the center of our flower when we're done. And the reason I stopped and did the centerpiece now is just because it's easier to do now before you get more ruffles in. So now we're gonna go back and we're gonna add in our second layer of ruffles around the outside ring. Again, you undo your twist, take it all the way down to that last orange petal, and then put this next one right on top. Okay. Now right now, now we've got two layers of petals, orange petals, around the outer ring, and we're going to go to the inside. think raveling is going to be any worse than with a regular uh, ruffle style wreath or anything. Okay, so now we've got two layers of ruffles around the inside ring and this is where we're going to fill in some extras. Um, let's see, I've got one, two, well I've got several left so I'm just going to pick out, <coughs> excuse me, I pick out a couple of places and just um, attach those. I will need something to attach them to the wire frame with, so I'll use this chenille stem, my wire cutters. 
for these, I'm just gonna take a chenille stem and cut it, uh, cut it in half. Not big thing. Long enough. I'm gonna go ahead and cut a couple more. And let's see. To do these, since these are chenille stems and they're not the same as my pencil twist, I'm going to take my stem and put it right on top, sort of like a staple, like you would put a staple, and just twist that, give it one little twist, and then I'm going to attach that right down to the frame. Fill it in, like in between where the twists are, bring the petals to the outside, gonna flip that, flip the wreath over, and I'm gonna secure the uh, chenille stem from the back. And that's just gonna give it, you know, a little more fullness around the center. I'm just gonna go in around the center ring, right in between each twist and add another petal. Okay? Now I've added an extra petal in between each twist around the center. So now I'm going to go back to my crossbar and I'm going to add a couple petals to each piece of that crossbar. I say. So that fills in our center uh, well. And that's how we're looking. We want to take our, and this is where we can cover up these last little remnants of, of the last little, where the twist ties show a little bit. You can cover those up with some balls. Uh, for these, I'm just going to kind of thread in there. I usually like to use an odd, oops, I tore that one up, odd amount. Slide those labels off. But you can just thread that wire through and hold it to the back till you decide how many you're going to need. Just thread those in there. Just going to turn those to the back <coughs> and wire them all together. flower wreath. Uh, I, I like it. I like the way it turned out. Uh, the petals, they're not quite as well defined as the paper mesh, excuse me, as the paper mesh petal, but it's certainly, you know, a good option. Uh, there is some raveling, as with any, uh, any mesh product. You're just going to put those strings and And then we're going to uh, take it and we're going to put some longer green at the bottom to finish it off. And one thing that you always want to do with any wreath is you always want to flip it over to the back. It's not so pretty from the back, but you always want to take a look at any of those wires, uh, ends of those, uh, especially since we added on these Chanel stems. You want to tuck them where they won't uh, scratch your wall or your door when you go to hang your wreath. So be sure and kind of tuck them in, get them all out of the way. If you have something that you can't cover up, can't get out of the way, you can always um, put a little piece of um, duct tape over it or something. Wash. Right. So now we're going to cut some, take some more green and make some longer tails. I'm just gonna, let's see. Cut. 
I'm going to cut about a two yard length. And I'm going to chevron that tail just to To make chevron finish on anything, you just fold it lengthwise and always cut from the folded side. So we're going to just take that one, pinch it up in the middle, try to get it about the center. And then we're going to add a short one to that. I'm just going to go ahead and secure this with a chenille stand while I get my other piece cut. The next piece I'm not going to cut quite the same length. It'll be shorter. It's probably more like a yard and a half. chevron those ends also. You don't have to do this. Attach it to the bottom of our wreath. And now we've got some longer tails for our leaves and you can just any way you want to do those. I just wanted to show you one more thing. Uh, that I, I'm going to add to the wreath. And this is some jute roping. This is the lime green. And I just think it would be nice to add a little something extra to give it a, just a little different texture. Uh, this jute roping is wired. So I'm just going to cut a length of about 30 inches or so. And I'm going to take the core from my mesh roll and just, I'm going to wrap it around that to get a, a little curl in the jute. And then you just slide it off of that. Oops, pulled it at the wrong place. And then I'm going to take these, take a few of these and uh, wire them in. But I'm going to go ahead and make a couple more. So there's our finished wreath now, and it measures in width about 24 inches, and well, it's about, you know, a little over 36 all the way to the bottom of the tails, and this is with the 10 inch wreath. I like that size. Uh, it's really good for um, the average size door. It makes it um, a good, good size wreath. Okay. Thanks for dropping by.